When you say you're a minority, you know you can go to towns, move in neighborhoods, you can buy things over, you can open a business downtown Chicago and do business, and I can't do it, but you from England. Muhammad Ali was an absolute gem. You my opposer when I'm on freedom. You my opposer when I'm on justice. You my opposer when I'm on equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious beliefs, and you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here at home. He fought the powers that be in the United States. Yeah, a little lamb, his feet is white as snow, and snow white and everything was white Santa Claus was white and everything bad was black the little ugly duckling was a black duck and the black cat was the bad luck and if I threaten you I'm gonna blackmail you <laughs> So mama, why don't they call it white male? They lie too. He exposed America through his words and actions, while simultaneously activists protested the U.S.'s efforts in Vietnam. American soldiers hiking their way through the sweaty jungles of South Vietnam. As soldiers continued dying. Its director, the powerful and feared J. Edgar Hoover, perceived the anti-war movement, which ranged from radical revolutionaries to peaceful protesters, as a threat to national security. Former FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, who Martin Sheen portrayed in Judas and the Black Messiah, became incensed with these protesters. Hoover began bugging, wiretapping, and surveying Dr. King, putting bugs in his hotel rooms, his private home. So Hoover, via Pulitzer Prize winner Tim Weiner, seen here, continued a practice of spying on his fellow Americans. We knew the FBI was systematically trying to squash dissent, and dissent is the lifeblood of democracy. On March 8, 1971, Ali took on Smokin' Joe Frazier in their first fight of their trilogy at the Mecca, Madison Square Garden. However, my conscience won't let me go shoot my brother or uh, some darker people or uh, some poor hungry people in the mud for big powerful America and shoot them for what? For three years and seven months prior, Ali was banished from the sport. He refused to step forward when his name was called as a draftee, an action punishable by five years in prison and a fine of $10,000. His refusal led to conviction, his boxing license suspended, his title stripped. Although his protest was supported by fellow black athletes at the Cleveland Summit in 1967, Ali represented the anti-war movement. This upset one J. Edgar Hoover a bigot whose main intent was to disrupt the quest for equality led by MLK and his Southern Christian Leadership Conference. This began when he was offered a position at the DOJ at just 24 years old running the Radical Division. Essentially, Hoover kept tabs on activists, left-wing publications, anarchists, training his mind to believe keeping track of dissent was the right thing to do, including, of course, Muhammad Ali. Hoover viewed the boxer as a potential threat and per Reuters, closely surveilled him. They tapped his phones. They monitored him to a T. This was their game plan, their blueprint, their strategy. Aside from being anti-war, the activists and Ali had this in common. The FBI was spying on both of them and they knew it. That's when professor and activist William Davidon, taxi driver Keith Forsyth, and Bonnie and John Raines concocted a plan. The crew decided to break into a small FBI field office in Media, Pennsylvania. Yes, it's true. The activists wanted to break in to use the FBI's own evidence against them. They felt protest wasn't getting it done. It just wasn't enough. The question then became, okay, when and what time does this take place? That, I'm embarrassed you for life. You, you what better time, they figured, than when Muhammad Ali took on Joe Frazier in New York City on March 8, 1971. All eyes were on the title fight. Ringside was a who's who of the biggest celebrities in the world. They used the fight of the century as a distraction for their efforts, and they were right. 300 million people watched the fight that night. Members of the burglary team walked off undetected with suitcases stuffed with sensitive bureau files that revealed a domestic FBI spying operation known as Co-Intel Pro. The FBI burglars selectively leaked the stolen files to journalists. They produced months of headlines about FBI surveillance of anti-war and civil rights groups. The FBI, at first, defended these unconscionable actions. Diplomats, government employees, sports figures, socially prominent persons, senators, and congressmen. And the documents were devastating, planning disinformation about anti-war activists, planning the murder of a member of the Black Panthers, sending the innocent to prison on the basis of false testimony by agents and informers. 